Good evening, uh, good morning, good afternoon, whatever time it is where you are. This is Tom Stiles, and this is Tom's Radio Room Show. And boy, am I behind. I am so far behind. But anyway, what I did um, over the past couple of days is I retrieved some of my radios from storage. And um, this is kind of one of my favorite ones, and I will tell you why it's one of my favorite ones in a few minutes. But anyway, this is a Bearcat Model 101 scanner radio. And it covers most of the VHF, UHF bands up to 512 MHz. And it is one of the first, not the first, but one of the first programmable scanners. Just before this, the scanners required crystals for each channel. So you had to buy a crystal of the frequency you wanted to listen to for each channel. And I have a couple of those radios and they're pretty much useless because the frequencies have changed and it's not easy to get crystals anymore. Nearly impossible to get crystals anymore. And they had a, a, a set of sockets inside the radio you took to cover off and you plugged in these little crystals. Well, this one came out later, and you didn't. It didn't require crystals. You could actually program it, and it has 16 channels that you can program. These are the 16 channels right here. Each of them has their own little switch. And what was unique about this, and I got a quick kick in the camera, is that you program this using these switches. And there was two ways of doing it. One is in the manual they had a list or tables of frequencies. And they would list frequencies, kind of the common frequencies for each of the bands. Um, and they would give you the switch settings, whether it was up or down, to program that frequency. They also had a formula that you could take any frequency and compute the switch settings. So to program it, what you had to do is you had to enter the programming mode, which I'm in right now. Lights on means, red light means it's in the program mode. And then set the appropriate switches either down or up for the frequency you wanted. Hit this enter switch and it would store it in memory. And then you'd go to the next available memory location and do the next one. And so on down up to 16 channels. And then once you had the 16 channels in, you could either scan all the channels by putting, pushing all the buttons up. Or you could push any one of them down and it would skip that channel. So let me go back to the scan mode so that the program um, light is off. I programmed in one channel, and that's the local weather channel, which is what you were listening to. And then I can, uh, I'll turn all the switches on, which is up. A lot of these switches, the contacts are dirty and they don't make good contact. I, I thought at first when I turned this on, and this has been in storage for eight years, eight years. And I was surprised when I turned it on, it didn't blow up. And it might blow up during this video. Well, hopefully it won't. Um, but the uh, squelch control didn't work. It, it, would, it would never open. The squelch would never open. So it would just continue to scan, scan, scan. And so I twisted it back and forth about 15 times and it started working. Um, right now, I'm using uh, a built, not a built-in, but a telescopic antenna that you can plug into the back. Let me show you that briefly. This is exactly for another radio. And it's got one of these old car radio plugs on it. So and I don't know where, I haven't looked, but I don't know where my adapter is for this type of plug. I think it's on a radio over there on the other side of the room. 
But anyway, I found this antenna, and this is actually supposed to tune both UHF, VHF, and HF by extending it. So if you want uh, VHF and UHF, or VHF anyway, you collapse the antenna and then you try to plug it in the back without seeing what you're doing. There. Oh, oh, no, not quite. Now let me turn the radio around. Kick the camera and all like oopla. There we go. And uh, this is, um, it doesn't fit very snug, so it has a tendency to flop down. And it has some other terminals on the back of here. Let me see if I can turn this around. I don't even know what they are. What the heck are they? Oh, this is external speaker. And that's another external, external speaker plug there. Um, no, that's what it says. This is external speaker. I don't know what this is. Maybe antenna. I don't know. And then there, there's the antenna. And then it also it came with. Whoop! There it goes. This uh, that plug on the back is supposedly for an external antenna. And then there, there's the came with an antenna that screwed in this hole right here, screwed down into the motherboard. I don't have that antenna. I know it's around here someplace. I don't know where. So anyway, as I said, it, it has six memories that you can program. I programmed the first one. Um, and like I say, what you do is, it's got, got this lookup table you can use if the frequency is in the table. And it tells you what the switches are to set. I did that. And for 162.450, which is weather, it was switch 1, 5, 7, 8, 12, 15. Okay, so I did that, and I programmed it. So that's what you're hearing. Still working perfect. Now, the other, the other channels may have something uh, programmed in them that I programmed six years ago, or maybe even longer ago. So I'm going to put it on scan, get everything up so it should scan, and it doesn't. Why isn't it scanning? Okay, there's there's how you manual step it. You push down to manual step. It's supposed to push up to scan. Go! Well, I don't understand why it's not scanning. There we go. It's like I said, the squelch knob pot potentiometer is noisy, so the squelch is a little intermediate, intermittent. Oh, it's it's stopping on this one because that's the weather station I programmed, and it's very close and very strong. So we turn that off, and now now it's scanning. There we go. That was the problem. That's the other thing I liked about this old radio is these blinking lights. I love that. I've got several other old radios that are kind of this vintage that have the sequence of LEDs that it scans across to get, tell you what channel it's on. And if I flip this one up, this number one, which does have something programmed in it, it should stop. There it did. I can turn the volume back up. There we go. I'll turn that one off. And it starts scanning. So, believe it or not, this whole radio, this radio, I think, was manufactured in 1975. At least that's what the, the manual says on it, 1975. And like I say, this is one of the first programmable scanner radios. This does not require crystals. So, I thought I'd show you that. Like I say, I, I'm bringing out a lot of my old radios and kind of dusting them off and see if they're working. I'm really amazed this thing's still working. And uh, if you enjoyed the show, please give me a thumbs up. And I appreciate everybody that's been using my Amazon store. I'm having another good month on my Amazon store and got some 
pretty good sales of people have bought things and I really appreciate everybody that does that. It takes the time. It takes an extra step to go through my Amazon store. And of course Amazon right now has a bunch of great sales. So anyway, thanks for watching. Bye bye.